I'm Linus Bork and I'm a senior technical instructor with VMware Education. In this video series, we're going to take a look at how VMware ThinApp works. This particular video will take a look at what ThinApp actually is. ThinApp is part of the Horizon suite of products that make up end user computing. This is actually made up of three main products, VMware Horizon Mirage, VMware Horizon View, and VMware Horizon Workspace. Overall, they make the whole Horizon suite. With each product, we can actually tie ThinApp in it in order to help us virtualize our applications within various desktops, both physical and virtual, as well as tie it in with the Horizon workspace environment to allow users to access their particular applications from anywhere in the world. One of the nice things about ThinApp is that it's an agentless architecture. That is, I just create an EXE or an MSI, and away I go. To the end user, there's no extra agents or clients to install to actually use the actual application. There's no installation, no changes to the registry, no special management required on the endpoint. This makes it really easy for end users, but we can still provide protection for applications by tying them in with Active Directory. Because of the way it works, it actually fits in with pretty much any environment and can be used either in a streaming environment if we want to by simply putting it on a share or install it like we normally would install any other application. We don't need any special servers or hardware to install it, and it can be tied into any existing application management framework. Because of the way it works, it can run on pretty much any device, from a desktop to a USB flash drive to terminal services if we want to. And it can be pretty much any application, from something very simple like a browser to something very complex like Java or SAP. And because of the way it works, we can actually tie it in with other applications, and they can run side by side, such as running my browser with Adobe Acrobat, uh, PowerPoint, etc. Because of the way it works, we can actually ensure security because the application itself will only run in a user mode execution, which means I don't have to have local admin rights in order to install the application. In addition, we actually have a virtual registry that is tied in with the application, and we don't have to worry about the host uh, operating systems registry being affected. This means that my operating systems stay cleaner, and my chance of problems in blue screens stay a lot less. And because there's no need for special device drivers, um, we can install it on any Windows platform, pretty much. The actual ThinApp itself is made up of a container, which we officially call the VMware Bubble. The bubble itself actually contains the application, along with the registry it needs and the file systems. Within it is a sort of quasi-virtual OS. Don't think of it like a true Windows OS. Think of it like a runtime environment. It's just a place for the actual container to run. Within it, we have the virtual registry and the virtual file system, which will map out to the associated physical and uh, physical registry and physical file system, sometimes referred to as the native registry and native file system. So to the application, when it reads everything through, it thinks everything is one happy OS. Um, and usually it's based on the operating system that the application was uh, captured on. Because of the way this works, this means that I can actually run my application on any Windows platform if I want to. What's nice about the way that it's designed is that we actually leverage something known as a sandbox. When a user launches an application, they get their own unique area that can stay with them on their profile or anywhere else that we decide to stick the sandbox. If I log in and decide to access a browser and make VMware.com my homepage, and Joe Doe, uh, John Doe logs in and decides to access an application or access the same browser, but puts Google.com as his homepage, that's fine. They'll actually be kept separate, and every time I launch it, I'll always get VMware.com, and every time that John Doe launches it, he'll always get Google.com. Because of the way this works, I can port the app from one OS to another to another. It easily, easily can be brought from Windows XP to Windows 7 to Windows 8 to Windows 2008 to Windows 2012. This allows flexibility for my applications and also means I don't have to install as many variations of the application. Some of the supported operating system applications that we have currently is under this list. 32-bit platform, 64-bit platform, 16-bit, 32-bit, etc. One of the newer features that came out with the NAP5 is the introduction of support for 64-bit applications to run on top of 64-bit Windows apps, uh, operating systems. This means that I can actually port my applications and be able to run them as time goes on and we get newer and better 64-bit applications. 
I can also run it on terminal servers, Citrix Zen app, as well as running it onto view desktops if I wanted to. That said, there are some things that ThinApp just cannot do. This includes doing 16-bit or non-x86 platforms, such as Windows CE, and running 16-bit apps on 64-bit apps. Those are limitations, but that's fine. Most of our applications today would be either 32-bit or 64-bit, and would probably run under more common operating systems. One thing we want to ensure is that we don't confuse a virtual app with a virtual machine. Remember that a virtual machine is basically an abstraction of the four food groups, as we call them, CPU, memory, network, and disk. A virtual app is an actual application that's put in a special container to keep it separate from other applications. Within that container, it sees what it believes to be the full registry and, and file structure. And because of the way that works, it allows me to run various applications of various versions together on the same operating system. There are some key ThinApp features that you should be aware of. The first of which is the compatibility with Horizon View. ThinApp is actually designed to be packaged and actually be launched from within Horizon View. I can actually assign apps um, either individually or as a group of apps to individual desktops or to pools. There's full Windows 7 support, which means that my legacy applications from older, app older platforms can be actually brought over to Windows 7. This allows flexibility in my ability to keep apps that users are very familiar with, even as the operating systems uh, progress to newer versions. As I move from one version of ThinApp to another, I can repackage an app without having to recapture the whole thing. The ThinApp relink utility allows me to actually redo the runtime inside the bubble to allow the app to get up updated versions of ThinApp packages, as well as to update any licensing info. Additional key ThinApp features include full support for Internet Explorer 6. This means that we can actually virtualize our legacy IE6 web applications that run on Windows XP and deploy them onto Windows 2008 and Windows 7. The one thing to keep in mind, however, is that Internet Explorer 6 will be end of life in April of 2014. So it's important to eventually move those applications over to newer versions of IE for full support from Microsoft. We also provide thin direct plugins, which allow us to redirect specific URLs from IE or other browsers to specific ones that we actually package as part of the ThinApp process. And there's support for startup services. So as part of the ThinApp, if the actual application has an actual service that it uses, rather than leaving it natively installed, it'll be actually part of the ThinApp, which means the actual running of the app can potentially be faster because it's inside the bubble with the app and not potentially conflicting with other services. In addition, if I have lots of applications, um, in some environments I've run into, they have over 8,000 applications that they need to virtualize. To make things easier, something like ThinApp Converter can help by silently converting multiple applications that are MSIs at the same time into ThinApp packages through the use of the vSphere virtual machines and the vSphere API calls. Internet Explorer 6 support is one of the bigger pieces that we found with uh, ThinApp, and that's that ability to actually take IE6 from an XP environment and turn it into a version that can be used on Windows 7 and Windows 2008. This has allowed enterprises the ability to migrate their environments over from IE6 um, over to newer versions and allows them to run with um, native Internet Explorer side by side at the same time. This allows flexibility for environments to be able to actually move forward, be able to update their applications at a pace that's expected uh, respectable for what they want to do. The ThinDirect native browser redirect allows us to actually redirect specific URLs from the native browser to the ThinApp browser if we want to. This works both with uh, Internet Explorer as well as other browsers such as Opera, Chrome, Firefox, etc. This allows the ability for the user when they put in a particular URL for uh, a ThinApp to be actually launched specifically that is designed for that particular URL. For example, if my native install was Internet Explorer 10, but the application ran better in Chrome, I could actually set it up so that when the user puts in the URL in the native browser, it actually will launch Chrome in the background and redirect the user to there. This can be actually enforced as well through a GPO for computer configuration and user configurations within the environment. As mentioned, we also have now uh, startup services support within the ThinApps. This means that applications that require specific services can have those virtualized and can be configured as part of the ThinApp bubble. 
This means the applications then when they do this, the calls for the actual services won't have to necessarily wait for the service to start as it'll be started with the actual app. In our experience, this has resulted in some applications where they've got certain helper services to actually start better than native uh, in some cases. Thin App Converter allows us the ability to actually take a whole bunch of applications uh, that are actually MSI applications and convert them into ThinApp packages as a grouping. We leverage the vSphere API to control the environment and actually set up virtual machines with snapshots that allow us to bring the apps through the virtual machines, package them, provision them out, and then reset the snapshot for a clean state to let it do the next application. This can make things easier and allow us to tie in with existing application packaging suites such as Weiss or Cresso. With the introduction of ThinApp 5, we saw some improvements from the core architecture. These included support for 64-bit applications to run on 64-bit OSs. In addition, we saw improved virtualization for lower layers with the nt.dll and improved supportability with documentation, which means that you should be able to package more apps far easier with better guidance. These benefits have resulted in some expanded application ca compatibility to allow us to be able to package more applications than we would have previously. This means a better sustaining architecture, and we've also improved supportability with AppSense for allowing, or by allowing integration with the actual product. In addition, we saw a change in the way that the actual hooks for the 64-bit applications, etc., were introduced with it. And we introduced better supportability for newer OSs and apps. The Windows 32 APIs uh, that were used by legacy apps were also uh, improved in their ability to uh, hook into the architecture. This means that overall a greater number of apps should be able to be ThinApped than were previously done. As part of the enhancements for ThinApp 5, we saw support for Office 2013, Internet Explorer 10, and Windows 8.1 be introduced. This means that we have better support for the latest Office suites within the environment and simplified the li licensing service option for the Office 2010 and Office 2013 features. The official packaging guides can be found in the KBs for Office 2010 and Office 2013 if you go to kb.vmware.com. One thing you mind, however, it's only supported on Windows 7 at this time for 32 and 64-bit versions. IE 10 was supported for native redirection and virtual packaging, and we have additional ADM and ADMX template files to be used with IE 6 for the ThinDirect. This means that browser and plugin virtualization is a primary focus going forward, which means we should see even more support for IE 10 uh, in future versions. One that even mind, however, again, this one is only supported up to Windows 8, which means the current version of Windows 8.1 is not supported with the IE 10. Windows 8.1 support is supported for legacy applications and other browsers, however. In addition, ThinApp actually is designed to work with Workspace, which allows end users the ability to actually find the applications they want without necessarily having to install them or having to go through some longer process. We have expanded management and entitlement options for ThinApps, scalable delivery mechanisms, support for view environments, which means we should be able to bring our ThinApps into our view desktops and be able to leverage them through there, as well as an app store, which allows for self-service activation, which means users can make the decision of which apps they want to, quote, install, end quote. We also are able to deliver Windows and SaaS apps, as well as data as an option. This all means that IT can entitle ThinApps to AD users and groups without having to go through the nightmare of a full install or be able to have to go to the user's endpoint to actually install applications. This leverages some power to the user who feels that they are empowered and, and having control over the desktop, while IT gets to sit back a little bit and not have to worry about doing the manual installs themselves. This also allows for better monitoring of application launch and usage. We can deprovision applications and control offline access, as well as support for application updates and streaming modes if we wanted to. To learn more and to get some hands-on experience with ThinApp and VMware Horizon View, come take one of our instructor-led courses, such as the VMware Horizon View Install, Configure, and Manage class, or the VMware View Fast Track class. In addition, you may want to consider getting certified by taking the VMware Certified Professional Desktop Exam, such as the VCP-5DT, and the VMware Certified Advanced Professional Exam, the VCAP-DTD. For more information, visit the VMware Education website for the latest course and certification availability.